I'm starting a brand new series and I'm really excited about it because I want to give you biblical keys to the healing ministry. And in looking at the healing ministry, there is no greater figure, there is no greater example than Jesus himself, who was the greatest healing evangelist of all time. We're going to get into this series, and when we do, we're going to talk about the ministry of healing. We're going to talk about questions concerning healing. I know it's really going to bless you. First, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me as usual. He's going to lead you in some anointed worship, and then we're going to get right into this lesson. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. The one who made the blind to see is moving here in front of me. Moving here in front of me The one who made the deaf to hear Is silencing my every fear Silencing my every fear I believe in you I believe in you You're the God of miracles So Jesus really is the ultimate example that we look to. And you know, that ultimate standard that we seek to model, which we see in Scripture through Jesus, is the one that we should try to emulate. There are dangers that come when trying to model our ministries and our lives after those of men and women who've preceded us. Now, I believe in honoring men and women of God. I believe that men and women of God can be anointed. I can name many great healing evangelists. I think of Oral Roberts. I think of Catherine Coleman. I think of Pastor Benny Hinn. And while these are great men and women of God, we should ultimately always look to Jesus himself. He himself is the flawless, perfect example of how ministry should be carried out, how the sick should be ministered to. So when we look at Jesus himself, we avoid the dangers that come with modeling after people. Now, I believe in impartation. I believe in receiving from those who've gone before us. I believe in honoring those who've gone before us. 
But there is a benefit to modeling after Christ himself. You see, if we create a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy, eventually that final copy will be corrupt and nothing like the original image. These men and women of God who've gone before us are themselves copy of Jesus himself. And so we, instead of becoming a copy of a copy of a copy, should become a copy of Jesus, should look to emulate his image. And when we do this, we find the benefits of Christ's likeness in our own ministries. So I want to encourage you, and this is what we're going to do throughout the series, to always look to Jesus when it comes to matters of ministry. And so looking to Jesus, this is what I want to address in this first part of this series on how to heal the sick. And really, this is a series on keys to the healing ministry. And I'm excited because actually, later in the series, I do want to address some questions concerning the healing ministry. So maybe you can actually let me know, uh, message me, let me know what you think about the healing ministry, some questions you would like to see answered. But I want to talk to you about the prayer life of Jesus. Because really, having a prayer life is the foundation to the healing ministry. The more often you pray, the deeper you go in prayer, the more intense the healing power of God becomes manifested on your life. The potency of that power is directly proportionate to your time in prayer. You cannot neglect prayer and be in the healing ministry because it really is just the power of God. When Catherine Coleman was being interviewed by a secular news outlet as to how the people were healed in her meetings. She said, first of all, I'm not the healer. Don't call me a faith healer. Don't call me a healer of any kind. I do not heal the sick. And I agree with that. And I would tell you the same thing. I can heal no one outside of the power of God. And Catherine Coleman said, it really is just the power of God. It's the healing power of God. And I tell you, it really is just the healing presence of Jesus. That cannot be duplicated. It cannot be counterfeited. And it cannot be manufactured by our own effort. The healing ministry, the true healing ministry, comes about through prayer. Now, you cannot train people to have gifts. I've seen a lot of training in spiritual gifts. And while I don't necessarily critique the idea of training someone in their spiritual gifts, I do want to mention the fact that it's not about formulas or systems or how-tos per se, but it's about the Spirit. It's not by power nor by might, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. And Jesus modeled this perfectly because He had a prayer life. Your prayer life is the foundation of your ministry. Your prayer life will determine what level of miracles you see. You can say, I want to see greater miracles, but are you paying the price by spending time in prayer? Are you paying the price for the anointing on your life by devoting yourself to the secret places of prayer? So Jesus hit, it, did have a prayer life. And in fact, prayer is as powerful as God. Prayer can do all the Father can. And the one who prays is not forcing God to do something outside of his will. The one who prays is aligning himself to become a conduit of the power and the will of God in the earth. So I'm not praying to get God to do something that he's reluctant about doing. I'm praying to align myself with his will, and in doing so, the power of God flows through me. So Jesus had a prayer life. I read this verse last week, but it applies to this lesson as well. John chapter 5, verse 19 the scripture says, So Jesus explained, I tell you the truth. The Son can do nothing by Himself. He does only what He sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son also does. Jesus followed the direction of His Father. And He received that direction in the times of prayer. Jesus prayed alone. Matthew chapter 14, verse 23 says, After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. So note, note that he prayed alone. He prayed at night. And he instructs us to do the same. Ma Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 6 say, When you pray, 
You are not like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But you, when you pray, go into your inner room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So Jesus prayed privately. He instructs us to do the same. Jesus prayed at night, and we should model ourselves after that. To heal like Jesus healed, you have to pray like Jesus prayed. If you want Christ-like power, you must have a Christ-like lifestyle. If you want to operate like Jesus operated, you have to live like Jesus lived. So again, I tell you, to heal like Jesus healed, you must pray like Jesus prayed. Jesus was disciplined to also pray in the morning. Mark chapter 1, verse 35 tells us, Before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. So we see from the scriptures that we've read thus far that Jesus prayed in solitude, Jesus prayed at night, Jesus prayed in the morning, Jesus also prayed in the evening. The scripture says in Mark chapter 6, verses 46 to 47, After bidding them farewell, he left for the mountain to pray. When it was evening, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. But he didn't just limit it to praying in the morning and in the evening and at night. Jesus prayed often. Luke chapter 5, verse 16 says, But Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. Jesus would even pray for extended periods of time before making any real difficult decision or before doing something that required a lot of thought. Often we are so presumptuous in what we do that we act before we pray. And in doing so, we wrap ourselves up not only in the flesh, but we wrap ourselves up in troubles and complications that we should have never been in in the first place. Luke chapter 6, verses 12 through 13, tell us about Jesus praying before selecting the disciples. The scripture says, It was at this time that he went off to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also named as apostles. Think about this. He spent the whole night praying before choosing the 12 disciples. Why? Because it was a major decision and he didn't want to be outside of the will of God. So Jesus prayed in solitude. Jesus prayed at night. Jesus prayed in the morning. Jesus prayed in the evening. Jesus prayed often. And Jesus prayed for extended periods of time before making any major decisions. If you want to heal like Jesus healed, you have to pray like Jesus prayed. The longer you spend in prayer, for every minute you spend in prayer, you're becoming more powerful in the Spirit. The longer you spend in prayer, the more powerful you become. There is no substituting your prayer life. You cannot go and read a book and expect to have healing power come on your life. You cannot go and watch a series of YouTube videos or listen to a series of podcasts. Yes, even from this ministry. You cannot do that and expect to have the healing power of God. In fact, it's already in you. I'm talking about manifesting it. You have to live a life of consecration before God. You have to set aside the time to pray. Private prayer is revealed in public power. I remember when I was just beginning in the ministry, one of the first things I asked the Lord for was, Lord, I'm asking you for the gift of healing. I want you to use my life to break the power of sickness over those who are suffering under its destruction. I want you to use me as a vessel, a conduit of heaven, to demonstrate the power of God. 
Lord, use my life to touch others and heal others. I want to see sickness broken. I want to see the works of the devil destroyed. And the Lord heard me, but it was in prayer that that gift was found. I remember asking the Lord, Lord, I want you to anoint me as much as it's possible for me to be anointed. I don't want to just see, and forgive me, I, I, look, let, me, let me say this. I love the Lord, and I appreciate every miracle He does, and I think you need to believe for healing, whether it's for something big or for something small. But I want to see more than just headaches healed, is what I would pray. I want to see more than just the backaches healed. I want to see people getting out of the wheelchairs. I want to see people being raised from sickness that would kill them. I want to see the blind eyes open and the deaf ears open. I want to see the mute speak. I want to hear their voice. And you know, if you followed our ministry for any extended period of time, that these miracles do take place. And I'm telling you why and how it begins in prayer. If I were to step out onto that platform without having lived a lifestyle of prayer, there would be no power. Do you realize that in our miracle services, for the most part, I don't lay hands on the sick? Although that is one form of healing. And look at over this series, we're going to cover a lot of material concerning the healing ministry. But the way I've been taught to do it, I do lay hands on the sick, but primarily, generally speaking, I don't lay hands on the sick. Do you realize that it really is just the healing gift and operation in the room? And people all over the room start getting healed? And they come up and they tell me, I felt someone touch me, or I felt heat come on me, or I felt electricity come on my body. Why is that? That's not my doing, it's the Lord's. And the reason His presence is there. The reason His power is present to heal is because of prayer. When you go stand in your healing gift, in your healing ministry, or as a believer trying to believe for healing, you are stepping into something that's outside of yourself. That power that is on you when you pray overflows. And the overflow is what touches people around you. Really, this is how I define ministry. All ministry is an overflow of God's touch on your life. Healing is no different. So the question is, are you full of the Spirit through prayer? Are you so full of the Spirit through prayer that it overflows and touches those around you? Prayer is a key to the healing ministry. Well, I want to pray with you now. And I know that there are many of you who are believing God to use your life in this area, in the area of healing. And I know that there are many of you who are believing for a miracle to be done in your body. I want you to know whether you're believing to receive or minister healing, God's power is here. Stretch your hands toward mine. Let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I lift that one right now who's believing for the healing touch of God to come on their life. I pray in the name of Jesus that that which is here would be imparted unto them. Lord, that they would receive the healing touch of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for the anointing that's now flowing. I thank you, Father, that miracles are happening. So, Lord, first of all, I pray for that one who wants to receive. Touch them and use them for your glory, I pray. Keep them, Lord. Protect them. And use them, I pray. And Father, I pray for those who are believing for a miracle to be done in their body. Let this healing river flow. There's a healing river flowing right now. Receive your healing. In the name of Jesus, Lord, remove that sickness from their body. I give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We bless your name, Jesus. We thank you, Father. I want you to say it because you agree. Say amen. Well, that's it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like information on how you can join what we affectionately refer to as the Spirit family, then go ahead and use the information at the bottom of the screen. Sign up today. It's absolutely free. You'll receive a fresh teaching every single Sunday 
in your email inbox brand new, and you can reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry staff, so do that today. I want to now read your comments, and this is from last week's teaching, How to Walk with God. Here's what some of you had to say about last week's video. And by the way, if you'd like me to read your comments on next week's video, make sure to comment here and now on this one. So, Walking Faith says, How do you always have what I need to hear every week? Thanks, David, for the great message. Well, as I've said before, this is not my channel. This is the Holy Spirit's channel, and He's the one who knows exactly what you need to hear at exactly the right time. Benjamin Porras writes, Awesome worship, Brother Stephen. And I have to stop right there to agree with you. If you've not checked out Stephen Moctezuma's worship playlist here on Encounter TV, you absolutely have to do it. My absolute favorite worship leader of all time. He's very anointed. Be sure to check him out. This teaching really helped me, and I actually cried watching this. It gave clarity with what I was lacking in my Christian life and showed how I'm going to eliminate it. Thank you very much for teaching because I really want to walk with God all the days of my life. God bless you and to God be the glory. Absolutely, Benjamin, to God and God alone belongs all the glory. Another commenter writes, David, you have been my spiritual mentor. I was feeling distant from God lately, but this message raised in me the desire and need to have him around me all the time. I realize that I may have everything, but I'm nothing without him. God bless your ministry. Shadrach Wangara writes, Powerful sermon. This is the true meaning of prayer without ceasing. 24-7 in the presence and in awareness of God. Thank you, Pastor, for this. You are blessed. And the final commenter writes, Thank you, dear brother David. Your teachings are tremendous and help me a lot to grow in Christ Jesus. I was praying to God on this topic yesterday, and I got my questions answered today. I thank you for your guidance through your teachings. You are like my own brother, and I mean it. God bless you, praying for you. I hope to meet you soon in person. And that's Javita Fernandez from India. Listen, and yes, you are all my brothers and sisters in Christ. We are one family, and I know that you can sense that connection through this channel. And I do believe that we are going to meet in person. In fact, we are very close to finishing our brand new television facility search. So, many of you know we've been looking for a building in which we could house our new ministry operations center. I call it the World Evangelism Center. And you've been helping us out big time, guys. You've really been coming through, and it's, it's overwhelming to me to receive this kind of support from you. And so if you haven't done so yet, make sure you partner with us. Remember this, we needed... 1,000 new, this was in addition to the partners we already had. We needed 1,000 new $30 a month supporters. Here's where we are on that campaign. Look at the progress we've made. We need less than 100 supporters now to sign up and say, David, I'll give $30 or more a month. That's all you need to do. And I'll tell you what we're going to do with those funds. Remember this, our why has always been, and it will always be, I promise you, our why is souls. We do this to win souls. The question I ask often is how much is a soul worth to you? And keeping that in mind, listen to what I'm saying. And please hear my heart. I want you to hear me on this. I know some of you sometimes maybe just watch the teachings and never watch beyond this, but I need you to hear my heart because we need to work together to win souls. We often hear about unity in the body of Christ but we so often fail in taking the steps to ourselves unite with others who are doing something for the Lord. Here's how you can unite. In fact, some of you, I really sense this. Some of you are trying to get God to work in your ministry. And you're saying, Lord, when's it going to happen for my ministry? When's it going to happen for my ministry? When am I going to start reaching more people? I really sense that some of you ministers, you're believing for breakthrough in your ministry, you need to learn to start sowing into other people's fields so that God can teach you what it is to give and receive. I know that's for somebody watching, but listen, we want to win more souls. And this new facility really is going to help us do two things. It's going to help us produce more content in higher quality more often. And it's going to help us do more events in more places all around the world. So we want to do that. We keep it very simple. Media and events, that's our ministry outreach. 
And so this new facility will house a 24 seven prayer room. It will be able to accommodate a studio audience where you can come in person Stephen Moctezuma will do the worship. I'll teach the word. We'll pray for you. You could do that. We're going to do weekly meetings in our new studio. From that studio, we're also going to be able to plan events all around the world. Just watch. This is going to take it to the next level. God is doing big, big, big things, and I want you to be a part of it. I'm telling you, we are on the verge. I know I've been saying this, and we're starting to see it, and I know you're seeing it too. In fact, it's already begun. This ministry is expanding quicker than we thought it ever could. And to God be the glory. I want you to jump on board. Be a part of this. You'll be able to say, hey, I was there from the beginning. One day when you see it, the stadiums being filled and thousands of people coming forward to give their hearts to Christ, you'll be able to say, oh, I've been partnered with them for years. I was there when they just had just, you know, 50,000 subscribers on YouTube and we were there at the beginning. And so help us today. When you sign up to become a $30 a month supporter or more, I'll send you a copy of either Carriers of the Glory or 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. I'll sign it for you. It'll be my initiation gift to you. You enjoy the teachings. You are blessed by the ministry. It's time to partner. Come on board. Give me a helping hand. Let's do this. Let's win more souls for the sake of the gospel. Now, if you want to give, and you're watching this on YouTube, watch until the very end. There's going to be a red button that appears. You can click it. If you're watching this on the app, wait for the video to finish, and then you'll see a button appear that says Partner with David. And if you are watching this anywhere else, just use the information at the bottom of the screen. Do that today. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for doing that. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.